Shooting like wrestling report. Uh, did you see what Seth Rollins said about the 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 COVID era of pro wrestling? He hashtag called it the golden age he said from coast to coast and sea to sea i don't know if there's ever been this much incredible wrestling going on at one time N taking nothing away from past generations they inspired and paved the way but we're damn sure keeping up and then some hashtag iron sharpens iron hashtag the golden age seth is very i think in the in being in a in a top position there <clears throat> it's just very um he, he takes it very personally, and, and I, I always talked about working with Seth was always one of my favorite guys to wrestle out there, just from out on a live event standpoint, and, and it always was a lot of fun, and I feel like he has a good understanding of, of old school psychology and when to mix in some new school stuff, and I don't always agree with everything, but he's, he's his own performer, and uh, I don't know. I, I go, I think wrestling... Doing the moves has always been something all the guys have always been able to do. The older, the, the generations prior had a far better understanding of psychology and how to get more out of less. And it, there was a reason behind it. And, and it was, and they, I believe they were able to get, if you look at crowds of the past compared to now, not now per se with no crowd, but just the reactions you know i think mongo mcmichaels had reactions better than almost anyone today in wcw but at the time nobody thought anything of it because there were so many guys getting reactions but like that's mongo who would go out there and mess up but you go watch mongo clips and it's a lot of them are funny right but his intensity and believability like i would pick mongo over anybody in a fight like when you're watching yeah. it, like I was like, that guy looks like a crazy motherfucker. I wouldn't want to fuck with him. Like I know I'm gonna get fucking banged up if we're going to fucking to dance. Like that to me is missing. And, and but the Seth is heavily involved in the system, and he's in the bubble. And uh, and I don't know. I could I would argue when you have him in the ring with Stone Cold Steve Austin and with Braun Strowman, I felt I thought they 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 looked out of place. Yeah, and I think we all can agree with that. I didn't see two guys that were. I just I didn't see it at the time, and that's nothing, you know. So it's tough. But I also, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> uh, but I also think, and especially this era, the COVID era, which I think has just been driving away fans. I mean, Dynamite did a good number this past week, uh, yeah. but outside of that, it's just been a disaster ratings-wise. People tuning out. Um, you know, it's, it's at the lowest levels uh, we've ever seen. So it just seems, yeah, you can do moves. You're doing great athletic. I mean, and, and that's another thing with saying athletic, because people today will say, oh, the Young Bucks are way more athletic than Goldberg. Goldberg played in the NFL, you know, yeah. or Mark Henry was in the Olympics. Athletic doesn't just mean doing flips and dives, you know. Athletic uh, no, yeah, means no. also looking to like an athlete and looking, like, looking yeah. the part. Mark Henry dunking a basketball at 400 right. something pounds. You know, and I'll tell you this if you watch, um, and you know, Goldberg too, and, and he was very athletic on things. Yeah. Now, did he pick up pro wrestling necessarily? He got into it, not necessarily on certain things, but he was able to athletically do amazing things. But if you look at the speed and intensity of Goldberg, that guy sprinting from, from corner to corner uh, is as fast as anybody. Right. That that that's that that's athleticism and that speed and the force that that real and and you know and I've always said gymnastics are not fighting and uh, you could take the great uh, the the greatest gymnast in the world and put him in, in the middle of a ring or an octagon and he gets fucking killed in two seconds. That was cool. Well, the, you know what I mean. It, it, they're fireworks. And there's guys that are good at fireworks, and I think you, you, but you're missing. You look at Benoit. Benoit, I think, was had great intensity and athleticism. Benoit, though, looked like he could beat the fuck out of you. That to, that's part of being a wrestler, and having that intensity and that. Right. And so there's just there's different um, elements of the game of respecting pro wrestling and having all the being a, a five tool player, if you will. And all that, and I don't necessarily agree with the golden age thing. I think a lot of guys don't have all five tools, or or, or they're, they're they've learned the moves, and uh, you know, selling is another thing. 
I, yeah. I talk about this. I think guys, and from a psychology standpoint, I'd love to be on commentary during a match like this because I would explain that I think the guys are so concerned with learning as many moves as possible, they have not mastered any of the moves, which is the only explanation for why guys are back on their feet so quickly is because the guys don't know how to execute the moves properly. And uh, right. that, but like, from a psychology standpoint, selling is something that the business was built around and that's the one thing that used to be instilled in everyone in the beginning of training is you you learn how to sell the move before you even start giving it and mm -hmm. like it's and and you get everything you can out of that move where i feel like now that has been done away with uh in just to in in to get to the next move um when there's right. so much in between that you can do with that and, and you still are doing the moves just at a different pacing and um yeah seth man i love seth i don't know i just i think who seth with the, and they all they do is they're they you read the promos that are written for you i think if we in you know and i'll say this i'm very confident i don't you know seth and the shield guys they wwe handed them everything with me i went out and got over on my own and i that's why i look at history of like i take it very personal on things and i love those guys but I like—I don't think they can fucking hold a candle to me in all in all seriousness, energy-wise, in getting over. Mm -hmm. And I have a lot of people that I think would agree with that. And there's probably some that don't. But you took go back to that period. My energy was literally given to those guys, and it took seven or eight months of me losing every every major match of time after time again, and them getting up on me and not getting revenge, and then the crowd still not accepting them for the longest time. That like that to me is he's. So he's very defensive because he's in that top spot, but I personally believe that if we're out there and everyone's allowed to go out and get over, I don't think those guys are in the top spot. Yeah. My opinion, and I think wrestling fans know that as well. And, that, and that's why with the guys, you know, Rusev Day, the guy could have been booked into a top spot and it was organic. And there's th yeah. That's what's been taken out of wrestling, but, so, but Seth is very defensive because he's in that top position and he works really, really, really hard and everyone there works really, really, really hard. But, you know, if Seth Rollins was in the Attitude Era, I don't think Seth Rollins is in that. Because those guys, I think, would have eaten him alive. And I yeah. think he's very, but that's, that's my opinion. And I could, be, yeah. I could be perfectly wrong. And I love Seth. And I loved wrestling Seth. But, and that's coming, I don't know. I just, I have mixed feelings on all of it. I don't think we're in a golden age of wrestling all, all around. What would you say was the golden age of wrestling? I don't. You look at again. You go back and just look. And you, we always talk ratings and things of that nature. Things have changed. I just look at the, the golden age of wrestling is when guys were allowed to go out there and they were allowed to become megastars. Yeah. Hulk Hogan, Macho Man, Ultimate Warrior, Stone Cold, Rock, Undertaker, Triple H. When he was in that, like when right. got Bret Hart, the and Shawn Michaels. That those guys were allowed to go out there and had more freedom. Now I guarantee you there was or, there was structure in the system still with that, but they had more leniency and freedom freedom to go out there and get over whereas now we see when guys a Zack Ryder gets himself over buried that's taken away that's from a wrestler you know Luke Harper Luke Harper started getting himself over and going out and having killer matches with guys when he won the IC title I think too and that that ladder match thing he, he had a period and then they just took it all away because momentum was being built outside of the, what they wanted and they, that's gone from the wrestling to me that that's the golden age can return if you're allowed to go out there and get as over as you could fucking get. I want every, I would hold a meeting if I was in charge of that company. I want to see who can fucking get the most over out there. I want to, and if you do, you're going to be rewarded. You're going to make more money than the motherfucker sitting next to you. We're going to fucking go out there, cutthroat, go out there and get over. Go say what you feel within the reasons and the guidelines of TV. And if you get offended and you're a pussy, fuck, I don't want you on my roster. <clears throat> Because that's yeah. another problem. The guys are afraid to get offended and to fucking go out there. Oh, you're the best. I love working with you, brother. You're so fucking good. Man, the S.H.I.E.L.D. guys fucking suck compared to me. And that's the fucking truth. And, that's, and I know that. And that energy, when I come back, we're going to fucking see what I'm on the other fucking side. And they're losing every fucking week in the ratings. Like, but that's the fucking attitude you need. And you need to believe and go out there. But they're not allowed. Not everyone's allowed to do that. And if you do do that, you're fucking punished. But it's yeah. not, to me, that's not, that's not pro wrestling. That's organized, right. just fucking shitty bullshit acting. Yeah. Fucking, yeah. fucking Cirque, Cirque du Soleil <laughs> shit right. acting. I don't want yeah. to fucking see that every week, and neither do the fucking audience. That's why the ratings are where they're at. Yeah.
I mean, if you look for me, if I had to pick, I'd say 87 to 89 and then uh, 96 to 98 because the audiences were on fire. The wrestlers were on fire. You had killer promos but and believability, too, uh, from 96 to 98. And you're just not seeing enough of that today. Yeah. And that's part of that, that attitude is missing that believability that 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 having a chip on your shoulder and I fucking have that now coming back and sitting back for four fucking years and having to watch everyone I, very happy for everyone the, the fucking my time's coming fucking again and uh, like and fucking hungry and going out there and not worry all I say to a guy all I care about in a promotion just let me go out there and get over and that's what I told WWE initially they wanted to do vignettes and all this shitty things with. Kenobi guy and fucking send us pictures of you in your trunks and I said fuck off I said put me back on TV and fucking let me go out there and get over and I fucking did yeah. because I believe I know what I'm doing and that's what you need that, and that that confidence and that believability and who gives a fuck what the losers on social media say they're gonna fucking run their mouths anyways all day long fuck off <laughs> yeah. sit back and fucking watch but, th but that's what you need that attitude, and that's missing uh, uh, as a whole on everything. And, and guys wanting to hug and shake hands. Thank you for fucking sharing the ring with me, brother. That was fucking 20 minutes of expending energy. Fucking too sweet. Like, man, fuck off. I'm here to yeah. get over. <laughs> gotcha. Thank you guys very much for watching this clip. And to watch full episodes of the Shooting Blanks Wrestling Report and Conversation with the big guy Ryback, subscribe to Patreon.com backslash Ryback for exclusive videos of both shows. And always remember, feed me more.